Learn the basics of layer masking in Adobe Photoshop. Let's check it out. Okay, here we are in Adobe Photoshop and I want to go over the basics of layer masking, why you use it, and give you a couple examples of how to use it. Now, layer masking is the most powerful tool, in my opinion, that Photoshop has to offer. And basically what it does is when you have an image, like, you know, you go out and you take a photograph and you want to remove the subject from the, the original background and put them on a different background, that is one of the main reasons to use layer masking. Not the only reason, but one of the main reasons. Now, why you do not use the eraser tool to do this, so let's look right here on my top left artboard. I have a picture of a lady that's in, um, you know, winter background. And I'm going to select my layer and I'm going to hit E on the keyboard. E stands for eraser. If I come over there, I can erase the around her and just leave her there. But the problem with using the eraser tool is if you save this Photoshop document, close it out, and then come back, you know, a day or so later and you want to continue editing, those pixels that you erased are gone forever. You have, you have deleted them and they do not exist. That is called destructive editing. Non-destructive editing is using a mask. So let me kind of show you what a mask does. Basically what a mask does is imagine a superhero like Batman. He uses a mask to conceal his identity. Now his face is still there. He just put a mask over it. So we didn't delete his face. That is the same thing with layer masking. You are going to conceal pixels. You are not going to delete them. So you select the layer that you're working with. In this example over here to the uh, far right where I have my layers, I have the top one called Winter Day. I have it highlighted. Go down to the very bottom and you'll see you've got icons of different uh, tools. Next to the FX, to the right of the FX, there is a kind of like a uh, rectangle with a circle in it. You click that, that is a layer mask, and it puts this little thumbnail next to your original image. That is a layer mask, okay? Now nothing has happened because we just added the mask. You use the brush tool in order to paint away pixels or paint back pixels. All right, so now that I've added the mask, I'm gonna hit a, a B on my keyboard. B is the shortcut for brush. And if you ever want to increase the size of your brush head, you can, you, you can right click on the screen and here's the size. You can raise the size and the hardness. Or if you wanna use a keyboard shortcut, the right and left bracket, right bracket increases the size of the brush head left bracket decreases the size of the brush head okay so i am just going to use the brush tool and switch to the color black as my foreground color all right and when i use black as my foreground color i'm just going to paint away the background of the picture like that now if for some reason you accidentally went and you oh i slipped and i painted over my main subject there that's the power of layer masking just switch colors so in my case, I'm going to switch to the white color, come over here, and I can paint back the pixels. Because we never deleted the pixels, a layer mask just hides the pixels. Okay? Now, I'm going to go uh, switch back to my color, and I'm going to go. Now, uh, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to sit here and do super detailed work because that will make the tutorial longer. But, of course, you would go around and you would make a good layer mask and only leave your subject. Now, let's look back to the far right over here to my layers. There's the thumbnail with my layer mask. If you right click on that thumbnail, it'll show you you have a few options. And the top one says disable layer mask. If you click that, you can see that the picture comes back. The mask is disabled. Right click, you can enable it and make it come back. You also have some more options to delete the layer mask if you don't uh, want it, add the mask to selection, and, and so on. And we're just doing the basics, so we won't go in details of all that. Okay, let's look at the top right artboard where I have this Mustang. And what I want to do is make sure that I have the layer highlighted. So over here to the far right, I'm going to click on my Ford Mustang layer, have it highlighted. And instead of just adding the mask and then going directly to the brush tool, I'm going to use the lasso tool because I'm going to show you how you another way to add the mask. So at the top left, I have the lasso tool. You can also click the keyboard shortcut L and it gives you the lasso tool and I'm going to just draw close to the car. I'm not going to get real close to the car. I'm just going to kind of go around it real quick in order to make a selection. And once you see these marching ants, when you ended where you started, you now have a complete selection. Now at the bottom right, I'm going to hit add layer mask. And what it does is it immediately takes the selection and it masks everything outside of that selection. So if you look at the thumbnail next to the Mustang over here to the far right, I have a layer mask. 
I can just go back to my brush tool. I can change the size of my brush and I can continue uh, masking away, bringing back pixels or continue going next to the car and finishing my mask. All right. So you might want to uh, go take pictures of your cars, your friend's car and make some cool kind of calendar or collage. So look, here's an example of a, a cool poster where there's a bunch of different types of uh, muscle cars. All right. That's another reason why you might want to do a layer mask. Now, bottom left artboard, I have a picture of a tunnel. All right. Now, this tunnel is of a, a railroad tracks, a railroad car going through, you know, the tunnel. And then it comes out on the other side and there's mountains. So say I want to do a cool sci-fi thing and I want the train to come out to the other side and go into space. So what I did is I went and found me a space image and I put it underneath the layer of this. So if I change the visibility of this top layer, you can see I just have a picture of space right there. All right, so I'm gonna add a mask around the tunnel and let the space come through. So make sure you have the tunnel layer highlighted. And this time I'm gonna hit P for pen tool. And I'm just gonna click, this is the pen tool, and I'm gonna click around the opening of this tunnel. And then I'm gonna complete a full circle there. Now what I have to do is make that into a selection where I see those marching ants. So at the top left, it says make, and I'm gonna click on the word selection. All right, it says, do you want to feather your selection? And I'm going to put zero, no feather, and hit OK. Now you see the marching ants around the tunnel, and I have a selection. But what we need to do before we add the mask is we need to invert the selection. So basically what that means, instead of everything inside the uh, marching ants, uh, we're going to make everything outside. So you go up to the very top, hit select, and then right there it says inverse. All right, I click on that, now inverse my selection, and now I'm gonna click Add Layer Mask, and you can see that it masked away that, and now there's the space. Now, since it's a mask, you can use B for Brush Tool. You can come over here, and you can continue to mask more away, or you can bring less. You can do whatever you wanna do. This is just an example of another way to layer mask, or another reason why you'd layer mask. Okay, final example of another reason why you wanna do layer mask. I'm going to zoom in on my bottom right artboard, and I have uh, this picture of a ladybug. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to duplicate the layer. So at the bottom right where I have my layer, layers, I'm going to hit ladybug, right click, duplicate layer. It will say, what do you want to name it? I'm just going to leave it like that. Now I have two layers. I want to turn that top layer into a black and white image. So with that layer highlighted, go to the very top, click on image, adjustments, black and white. When you click on that uh, and you hit OK there and then you click on that it immediately turns the image to black and white. So our top, top layer is black and white. The bottom layer, if I change the visibility, its color, top one is black and white. So now we're going to add a mask to the top layer. Get our brush tool and this time we're going to paint over the ladybug and bring back the color. So that, that way the entire image is black and white except for the ladybug. All right, now I'm not gonna do a super detailed job, just wanna kinda of show you how it works, but there is where you would have a black and white image and a colored ladybug. All right, that's it. That's some examples of why you would layer a mask. There's obviously more powerful things to do with it, but these are kinda of the basics. Thanks for watching.